In this video, we're going through the most common lies meat eaters tell themselves. One of the top comments I see on posts about veganism is, no one cares, and I used to think I felt the same way. Pax Fauna's research found that meat eaters care more than they let on. Initially, they pretend they don't, but after a little digging, the psychological mechanisms they use to mask their feelings become apparent. Just because we have a natural tendency to care about something does not mean that we should really care about that something. There are many examples in this sense. It's just that this is completely irrelevant. The right question is not whether we care about animals. The right question is, should we care about them? If the answer to this question is, no, we shouldn't care, then it is perfectly reasonable to ignore this emotion as much as possible. The first technique is avoidance. Non-vegans actively try not to think about animals when they're buying meat. Again, if the answer to the previous question is that we shouldn't care about animals, uh, then it is perfectly reasonable to employ such techniques to suppress an irrelevant emotion lacking a rational foundation. Studies on the meat paradox have also shown an avoidance of empathy. Meat eaters will dissociate meat from the living animal themselves, so there's no one to actually empathize with. This is a very useful technique. Again, I fail to see what the problem is. We constantly employ such techniques to simplify our lives. For example, um, if we fear heights, we know it's better not to look down and focus on that fear. This is a useful lie in such a situation. Our entire life is a carousel of emotions. And in general, it's good to avoid negative emotions. So why not apply the same reasoning to this emotion we feel towards slaughtered animals? What makes this particular emotion more important than in other negative emotions that we acknowledge are better off suppressed. After avoidance comes defensiveness. Yes, I know what's happening to animals is terrible, but it's part of my culture and it's natural and it's healthy. If you've ever had a conversation about eating animals with a non-vegan, you've experienced how defensive and nasty people can turn. If meat eaters genuinely didn't care about animals, they wouldn't get defensive in the first place. Again, of course we care. We've been programmed by evolution to care. But just because we feel this irrational emotion, it doesn't mean we have rational and sound reasons to care about animals. For example, certain people suffer from a fear of the dark. In practice, they care if the light is on or off, even though they shouldn't. It's just an irrational emotion. Even knowing I'm looking at an optical illusion, my eyes will still be fooled by it. But this doesn't constitute an argument that what I'm seeing is more than just an optical illusion. 58% of American adults think most farmed animals are treated well. This is why one of the most common arguments people make against veganism is, what if we gave the animals a good life? Then I think it's okay to kill them. This argument falls apart for two reasons. The first is that they don't have a good life. They're mutilated, confined. Uh, just because the premise of an argument is false does not necessarily mean that the argument itself is incorrect. The validity of an argument depends on the logical relationship between its premises and its conclusion. And a false premise does not necessarily entail an invalid argument. A false premise is an incorrect proposition that forms the basis of an argument or syllogism. Since the, the premise is not correct, the conclusion drawn may be in error. However, the logical validity of an argument is a function of its internal consistency, not the truth value of its premises. If they're mutilated, confined, and slaughtered at a fraction of their lifespan, even on the best farms, mutilations will occur without anesthetic, and they go to the same slaughterhouses. Nobody is claiming that animals have a good life in the present. Sam Harris is simply attempting to comprehend the moral implications of a hypothetical situation in which animals live a good life. Essentially, it's just a thought experiment, which we do all the time. For instance, what would it be like if dinosaurs lived in the present? If you respond to this question by stating that dinosaurs don't live in the present, it demonstrates that you have failed to grasp the hypothetical premise and the underlying idea of the discussion. The second flaw in this argument is that by saying animals deserve to be treated well, you're acknowledging that they deserve moral consideration. If someone deserves to be treated well, that implies they also shouldn't be stabbed for an unnecessary reason. Sam Harris's proposition was that it is better for an animal to exist and be happy, even if it will eventually die, than to not exist at all. 
If you believe that it is perfectly moral and good to have children, then you must also believe that this assertion is correct. After all, when you have children, you knowingly expose them to a fatal end, as you are aware that they will eventually die. Yes, you might argue that they will die of natural causes, while animals in farms are killed by humans, but to the animal or person in question, the cause of death is irrelevant. Would you rather be struck by lightning or killed by a person? Both would be equally unpleasant. The pig in the farm would not be any happier in the jaws of a tiger than in the hands of a butcher or in the flames of a forest fire. So, what's the difference? If we had two dogs right here and one was horribly abused and kept in a cage, whilst the other had a wonderful life with loving companions, which dog would it be better to kill? Obviously the one who's being abused. Which would be better? A world in which you have a dog that lives the happiest and most beautiful life possible, but is ultimately killed. Or a world in which there is no dog at all.